All right, we're in the finals. We have the choice once again. We'll play first. Let's see here. We got all of our colors. This hand looks very good. We will keep. So next turn we get our Wooly Loxodon morphed, and then the turn after that we can Ghost Fire Blade and equip it, which is kind of nice. Not quite enough to get in on that uh, Disowned Ancestor, but maybe it dissuades him from outlasting again. I guess we'll have to see. He's just raiding. All right. So Mardu Horde Chief's my guess, which means Ghost Fire Blade Equip should still work pretty well for us. Get rid of his token at the very least. That was a good draw. Good necessary draw. I imagine he chumps, but I guess he doesn't have to. All right. He'd rather take four damage and lose a token. That's pretty telling. That would indicate to me that he has Raider Spoils or Rush of Battle in his deck or hand. Definitely would like a land here. There we go. All right, so we can swing with our Wooly Locks it on once again. See if he blocks, because we've got the cut in case he does. Pretty bold, pretty bold uh, block, I must say. Pretty bold block, but a successful one. So we'll play our Soothsayer instead and get some action going, make our treasure cruise cheaper, try and build some nice card advantage. Search for a nice card. Jeez, none of these cards seem all that good. Do I need a Teamer Charger? Uh, not really. Whereas a land would actually be beneficial for flipping that dude. I forgot if we played a land already this turn. I think we did, which makes me want to take, I guess, the White Source still for our Seed Rhino. Otherwise, I was going to take the Swamp, which would make sense for that. But I'm just going to take Scoured Barrens instead. And we're still going to be able to cast Treasure Cruise. We're just not going to get in with our Wooly Loxodon like I wanted to. All right, that, unfortunately, is absolutely dreadfully horribly bad for us since he just gets a bunch of, bunch of flying tokens out of that. So can't say I'm too terribly pleased with an Abzan Ascendancy hitting the board. That's, that's going to be pretty awful for us to deal with in general. So I'm not sure we can beat that at this point. That's going to be... That's pretty tough. Well, incremental growth helps, but... Uh, we still have some work to do. I think we treasure cruise first. Draw some cards. So now we have scout the borders for future stuff. Um, swing with my morph doesn't do anything. So I'm probably going to have to murder his cut, his alabaster Kirin next turn to begin minimizing the damage. Since Abzan Ascendancy, 
Yeah, I'm not sure I can beat that. That does seem very difficult for our deck to beat. If I can find my river wheel aerialists, I guess, I would feel better about it. But uh, till then, we're going to be in fighting an uphill battle, unfortunately. Definitely fighting an uphill battle. All right. Uh, well, there's our river wheel area list. All right, that does help. Um, do I want to? I almost want to incremental growth for bashing purposes, but I'm not sure if that makes sense. So I have seven resources, which means I can play area list plus embodiment, which probably makes sense. Let's play that. That forces him to have an answer immediately for our our dude, which is entirely possible, but. I'm not going to worry about it just yet. Um, I could swing with the morph, but I don't think I'm going to do that either. I think we're just going to continue to take a little bit of damage for a bit here. Yeah, that Abzan Ascendancy is pretty insane. Uh, well, that's not ideal, so I'm not going to block it because I'd rather be able to murderous cut it the next turn when he does that. That tells me he has an answer for our river wheel, at least in the form of a trick. So I think what we're going to do is swing into his Kirin. Then when he awakens the bear, we can murderous cut in response. Um, I'm trying to see if I have the resources to incremental growth. Um, I can't protect my guy, so that's just going to be an unfortunate loss. But he is out of out of gas at least at this point, so that's kind of a good sign. We've got five. Six, I've got eight mana. I can scout, making murders. I can incremental growth, and then still do murderous cut kind of like that. Why don't we incremental growth. I almost want to put three on the river wheel area list, but I could see why that would be greedy. I think we're just going to put one here, two here, and three here. I kind of feel like putting all my eggs in one basket could be a thing, but I'm going to do it anyway. So we'll go ahead and bash with these guys. That lets him crack back for eh, decent damage, but getting in for 12 would be pretty nice. So we'll see how he blocks. Yeah, he's just going to take 8. This gives him a future chump blocker for our river wheel area list, but... I think that's acceptable. So now we'll just murderous cut his Kirin when he swings. I imagine he's going to be swinging with a lot of things. It's a pretty telltale sign. He could have just thought we missed it, but kind of giving the appearance that we're holding up a trick. Definitely. Abzan Ascendancy is a very difficult card to beat. Unless you have some very good forms of evasion, like unblockable. I imagine he swings with everything? No, just that. All right, well, we're going to murderous cut it to protect ourselves. I'm 
not sure why I didn't swing with the other token, but maybe just trying to dodge removal. All right, Curin's not a big deal. Hate Blade, eh, it's kind of a big deal, but certainly not. Ooh, that was a good draw. All right, let's uh, guess, get in with our area list. Start taking out those tokens. And we'll drop a Siege Rhino. Make our opponent lose life, and I think we're actually going to pass. Uh, I could uh, I could play the Scout the Borders, but I think we're on Parapet plan at this point. These guys do have First Strike, something to keep in mind. But we've still got Siege Rhino, and we've got some good blockers now, so... This Parapet at least has him on a clock. And he still has to deal with our River Wheel aerialists as well. He only has the one Death Toucher, which eh, might just trade for my embodiment. My embodiment's not doing all that much anyway. If he's just on the Outlast plan, I'm feeling a lot better about this game. That definitely tells me he's, he's in some trouble. No attacks either. All right. Could have kill shot, but it's all right. Let's uh, play land, swing with aerialist. Still just blocking with spirits, so uh, I think we'll do scout the borders now. Search for something. Uh, well, Tusk Colossodon's a big boy, so I guess we'll take that. Dump the rest. Uh, I don't want to play it, so I guess we'll equip Ghostfire Blade to... Uh, it doesn't matter. See, Drano has Trample, I guess, so we can make that work, and we pass. All right, high sentinels are decent, but still not capable of stopping our river wheel aerialist. Still not capable of it. He doesn't have a spirit too, so we are going to force him to chump block here, which is pretty good for us. So we got rid of a huge dude. He gets another token, though. Yeah, that ascendancy, man. It's doing some work for him. That is for sure. All right, he's just going to concede, which I am not going to complain about. So uh, we're playing against... Abzan with Abzan Ascendancy and High Sentinels. Very good, very good cards there. So what can I bring in? I don't think I've got much of a sideboard in my deck, do I? I can bring in Cancel, which is slow against this deck, I would say. Canceling a... Well, I've got the Sultai Charm for his Ascendancy. I get, you know, that's actually a pretty good out. And then we've got... Uh, yeah, I don't know what to do about... I guess we have Murderous Cut for his Big Fat Flyer. So, we're reasonably well-equipped. Uh, the rest is pretty self-explanatory. So, if, if I want to bring in Cancel, I do it over, like, the Weave Fate, which I'm probably okay with. Maybe I'd do that. Abzan Ascendancy is pretty high impact, especially late game. So, let's bring in the Cancel over the Weave Fate. I do like a good Weave Fate, but I think negating his spell in this case because of how good that uh, Abzan Ascendancy is, is more worth it. All right, 
This is a slightly dangerous keep, but I am going to keep because we have the parapet on turn two. And if we get a blue drop, we're in good shape. So I'm going to keep it. And in, even if we don't get a blue drop right away, we can still do the Loxodon. So that was good. Now we can find our black drop or guess white drop if we draw a black source. Hate Blade's pretty good. But not the end-all be-all. Smoke Teller's not bad, but I think, well, maybe we do want to... Well, Smoke Teller can't swing in, though. Maybe I dropped the Smoke Teller because it trades with the Hate Blade, and that's a pretty reasonable threaten. All right, found his green source. I may trade a hate blade for a smoke teller. It's not like this smoke teller is going to do anything. So I feel like it's now he's see he's not even interested in trading it. So that is pretty telling. Uh, ooh, dismal backwater is good. I think we're going to swing with our smoke teller now, and then we're going to play a parapet and pass. So we've got Sultai Charm Mana now, which is nice. So I can deal with a turn four Sentinels of Ereshen. Good. So we're going to get rid of his Bomby Threat that we knew about right away. Should have actually swung with the Hate Blade. Just going to do it now, not even worry about feet of resistance or any garbage like that. And then we pass the turn. It's going to be tough to leave cancel up. But uh, I think we're going to have to pop our embodiment here, which is actually a good opportunity to leave cancel up, but we'll see how much more action he's got. And, oh, he's <laughs> That's funny. That is really funny. All right, well, uh, still... Went back to rapidly losing, I guess. That's pretty strong. Um, let's see. So I can morph this and leave up. Well, then I can't leave up cancel. I don't really care about cancel, I guess, anymore since we're just going to lose to a second high Sentinels of Ereshen. Wow, that is pretty, that is pretty good. Um, I guess we morph this and then we're going to pop our embodiment so we can at least start cracking back with the Wooly Loxodon starting next turn. The problem with that is his Mardu Hate Blade, so I don't know what I'm going to do about that High Sentinels. That's going to be a difficult one to beat. I got to find my murderous cut, I guess is what it boils down to, unfortunately. So that's kind of disappointing. Just taking far too much damage from a big, ridiculous rare. All right, let's pop this guy and deck thin and find stuff, I guess. So we need nothing, really. I guess we'll find a... Well, it doesn't matter. Uh, let's scout the borders. Not sure what we can find exactly. Well, Siege Rhino is satisfactory, I guess. So I guess we'll take that and dump the rest. And we'll leave up Cancel, but taking, taking more damage than I can really afford to take. So we're just really desperately on the hunt for that murderous cut at this point. Yeah, pretty preposterous. Not only that he has two High Sentinels, but that he played back-to-back -back High Sentinels. That is pretty awful for us. I should have canceled that. I actually had cancel in my hand. I don't know why I didn't. Oh, well, that helps. So we'll get rid of the actual thing that was holding us back from doing anything. And I am going to... Try and leave up 
cancel here, I guess. Although, is it worth it? Probably is. But I don't, well. He has feet of resistance mana, but clearly not playing around that. Come on, cast it. Alright, so still getting beat down here, unfortunately. Not canceling that Alabaster Karen was pretty bad. Just too much in a rush. That's another thing about this format. The time. Because it because I it's like I'm I feel like I have to rush because it's a slow format. And then when I get comfortable and I don't want to rush, I run out of time. So it's like it's kind of a double edged sword. I don't really like it. Oh. I like that. Definitely like that. That's not what I was expecting. Ah, probably canceling whatever this is. Well, not really motivated to cancel a Highland game, but we're kind of in a rush, so I guess I will. The reason is because I'm not going to be able to leave up cancel next turn. That was the only reason I canceled it there. Um, let's swing with the uh, Woolly Loxodon. We don't have to play Seed Rhino this turn either. No blocks. All right, let's go for it here. I had kill shot. Smite. All right, that's pretty devastating, but can't do anything about it. Wouldn't have been able to leave up cancel, so troublesome anyway. You slice it. Still wish I'd canceled that alabaster, Karen. So not used to playing with cancel in this format. I think that was what. I think that's what the main issue is. So river wheel aerialist would be a good draw. Yeah, River Wheel Aerialist would be a fantastic draw. Embodiment, not so much, but at least we get some decent stuff here. Uh, shouldn't have tapped my blue source, so I could have done Elder plus Embodiment. But Elder is pretty irrelevant on this board, so I guess I'll just play an Embodiment. Still wish I'd cast the Elder, too. Would have made better use of resources. Making a lot of errors, unfortunately. Sea Drano also, unfortunately, does not do much of anything on this board, so pretty desperately on the hunt for that. Um, pretty desperately on the hunt for that river wheel aerialist, or we are not going to be able to do much. I can start swinging with the shambling attendants, but we are currently on a four turn clock, so that is going to cause some issues. Yeah, and Smite is pretty brutal. Double High Sentinels. It's kind of a shame that we're losing this game. Um, yeah, I guess I can't do anything about that, so I have to unhappily accept. Still taking more damage than I feel comfortable with. He definitely should not have attacked with that Krumar Bonkin, but I accept. And Pearl Lake Ancient's decent, but not quite what I'm going to need here. Or, I mean, it's something I need, but I'm just saying it's not quite enough to solidify a victory for us. Still have to find a way to deal with that Kirin.
All right, that's definitely nail in the coffin at this point. So that's unfortunate, but unfortunate things happen in Magic every once in a while. This doesn't have reach, does it? No. Just can't be countered. All right, so I guess we'll slam it anyway, because why not? Could still draw Riverwheel Aerialist as an out, but we are in big trouble otherwise. Waking the bear. Uh, technically, I could win here. If he blocks with a one toughness guy, we can win with Awaken the Bear. Um, that unfortunately is not going to let us win, though. So he got us. It was a close call, though. It was close. But the truly unfortunate part is we have to go game three against a deck that's running double high sentinels of Ereshin. So unfortunately the not using the cancel on the Alabaster Kirin came back and kicked me so hard in the face that it makes me hate myself. So not too happy with that play, uh, but we'll get over it. We'll move on. We'll figure out how to beat this deck. Uh, still keeping the cancel. Hmm... I think everything else, maybe Dreadmaw for like life gain? To buy time? Maybe? Does that make sense? I really don't know. I don't think so. The problem with playing the Dreadmaw is I'm going to lose to double high sentinels unless I can find my threats. This this isn't going to buy me enough time against those. I basically have to hold Sultai, Charm, and Murderous Cut for high sentinels, um, which sucks, but I got to do it. So I don't think I can bring it in, and nothing else really seems appealing. So we'll try this again. Would like to play first, and yeah, we can keep this. I guess we don't have a green source, so this hand's not as good as I thought it was. And we have two white sources. This hand's actually a lot worse than I thought it was, but that's all right. We'll see if we uh, get lucky, drawn to some good resources, like a green source. If we draw a green source, we're in business. Hey, there it is. All right. Can't quite leave up cancel yet. I could play smoke teller, which I'm not sure what that does. I can bust Embodiment to find a second blue source. Just to play that. I'm going to play a Smoke Teller. Next turn I get the Siege Rhino anyway, so I don't see any reason to pop Embodiment just yet. I'd rather get a threat on the board. I guess a good reason to pop the Embodiment would be to be able to leave up Cancel for the turn he can play. Yeah, that would have actually made sense. The turn he could play the High Sentinels, but that's okay. I mean, theoretically, a Siege Rhino can race a... Uh, ooh, injure that? All right. So I imagine he's just playing High Sentinels next turn. Waking the bear is nice, but uh, let's get our siege rhino down there. So I currently cannot cancel, which means maybe I wanted to pop the embodiment, but I guess then he would have had a debilitating injury maybe for our siege rhino. I imagine high sentinels coming down here. 
He has two of them. How could he not? Especially since he hasn't done anything. It just makes sense. Well, Owlblaster Kirin is much less intimidating. That's actually a great land to pull since now I can cancel at will. So now I definitely have zero motivation to pop my Embodiment of Spring. I guess I do have to cancel an Armament Core if he has that. Because it's just a bit too good, I think. No plays? That would be nice. Alright, well, that's not happening. Not an ideal draw, but we're still in pretty decent shape. All right, that's actually fine. Now we can swing into it and get our Awaken the Bear online. Ooh, that was a good draw too. All right, zero concerns about that. And we get to trample, beautiful. All right, let's get big man out there. And we have murderous cut ups, so that's pretty nice. Could get dune blasted, but haven't seen it yet. Man, that'd be a sick deck. Double high sentinels plus Doom Blast. Well, there we go. Did it. I thought our deck was pretty awesome, so I was going to be definitely disappointed to uh, lose that one. Man, we had three land draws coming up, too. But we uh, drew exceptionally well in game three. Ended up going 2-1, even though our first match was a free win, essentially. Uh, no, it just was a free win. Technically, literally, any way you want to look at it, it was a free win. So... Round two, tough match, but Villainous Wealth in uh, game one took us down pretty well. And then Trail of Mystery on turn two took us out pretty good, considering that I feel like a guy's entire deck was Morph Creatures. And then match three, we beat the Double High Sentinels uh, deck, which is just insane. If you have one of these, you should be really happy. Two of them, your head should explode. That is so insanely powerful. So uh, happy to beat that. It was a fun deck. We got some spoils to sell, so it worked out pretty well for us in the end. We'll see you for the next draft.